But we can pretend that it's like because of the war and all the people killed. It does kind of make sense that maybe we could do a communism play here, but it's so early the trade unions aren't even... I mean, the trade unions aren't even non-marginalized yet. It's too soon. So do we want to go with presidential or parliamentary republic? Parliamentary is all about legitimacy based on votes and it gives you an extra government size allowance, but presidential republic gives you a little bit of authority and some more legitimacy from including the head of state in government. There's also a 20% government ideology penalty though. And I think parliamentary republic is the way that we're going to go. So let's give that one a shot. We're going to go quite hard away from monarchy. That is going to cost us a good deal of authority. So we're going to have to back off on some decrees. Oh, we have a new general entry. Stamp out monarchism. And a lot of people are doing some things here. So we'll get this if we don't have monarchy for five years. Well, five total years of peace. Of not having civil war. And there have to also be no interest groups that are powerful that support monarchy. I think we'll do that naturally. Alright, war with the Futa Jalan has broken out, but that should be easy peasy to take care of. Should be no trouble whatsoever. And there we go. We got Rotary Valve Engine. Wonderful. We're probably going to want to set that up in all of our buildings and manufactories. Supposedly it costs our furniture manufacturers to do this, but I need, I want to free up the population, so we're going to do it. Same thing with the tooling workshops and the paper mills. Steel mills, they get an upgrade, and motor industries as well. No arms industry. Switching would result in very low productivity though. And y'all are not actually subsidized, that is true. I say we switch everybody except the ones that would be too bad. Same thing with the artillery and the munitions plants. They're already subsidized, so screw it. Let's take a quick look at Britain's buildings and see what kind of production methods they're doing. They've got sewing machines and craftsman sewing. They do have mechanized looms. What about tooling workshops? They got that upgraded. They're doing better on paper. Furniture manufacturers are correct. Okay, so the AI is upgrading their production methods now. When the game first started, the AI didn't really want to do that. Like, way back in, back when it released, like, what, a year ago now? Two years? Anyway, what do we do next? We might want to do steel railway cars to provide more transportation from our... Oh, wait, steam trains. Yeah, from railways. I was gonna say that that would be urban centers, but I stand corrected. Shift work would allow plus 20 economy of scale building level cap. I wonder if it'll tell me what the maximum is right now. 30, okay. I'm not sure that we built more than 30 buildings in any one location that wasn't like a barracks. So I don't think shift work, I don't think shift work makes sense. Vacuum canning, that might be something to produce more groceries. Let's take a look at what the grocery price is at the moment. We're actually even, okay. There's aniline so that we could do synthetics plants. These would make, oh, they would produce dye. From fertilizer and sulfur. Well, we should we just trade for it right now. I'm not sure that that would be like a like a really profitable thing to do. Dye might have to be kind of expensive to make that worth it. You could just have cheap sulfur though, and decently cheap fertilizer. There's vulcanization. We can get elastics for textile mills that would start consuming rubber. We're not gonna do that. We don't have access to rubber yet. Or do we? I see no rubber plantation listed here. Maybe it's under resources. There's no, there is one here, but there's only one location that we could build it. There's actually not enough in Prussian Western New Guinea. Okay. Never mind. Yeah, I don't think rubber is going to be the way to go. Now, electrical generation, that might be of interest to us. Electric fences would lower our labor use for livestock, but we would need electricity. We can get more services from electric street lights. Electric sawmills would allow us to produce more wood. And electricity is now a local resource, so you have to build it in that same state. Wood is actually okay, so I'm not too concerned about that one. I kind of like the idea of threshing machines. Other than that, we could do steel frame, but I think that would be silly. We need to pay off our debt first. 
There's mutual funds for publicly traded stuff, but we might be going communist. I don't know if we're going to do industrialist or communist. Identification documents for taxation capacity might not be a bad thing. We do have a little bit of taxation capacity not having enough of that because we have 15.2 unrealized taxes. Thousand, I mean. Alternatively, human rights unlocks multiculturalism, but almost nobody supports that. That does lead to feminism. We could be like the first in feminism. Uh, corporatism we're about to get for less radicals from standard of living decreases in accepted culture specifically. There's camera, which is just more prestige and some production methods for arts academies. Philosophical pragmatism might not be bad to lower our bureaucracy costs and whatnot. I could spend six years doing malaria prevention, but I think it's too early for that. Gantry cranes might be something that we should finish up that unlocks industrial port. So then we can start doing steamers and get way more convoys that way. Let's finish up gantry cranes. I might not even need all these ports that I'm building then, as long as I can swap them over to something else. Let's cancel the ones that don't have any progress. And we should be getting gantry cranes right now. Awesome, so now I can swap my ship production probably over to steamers here. I don't think I'll be able to do everything though. Alright, if I upgrade all ports, I will get 5,600 convoys. Wow. I will need 160 steamers to supply that. Apparently that would cost me $17.2,000. <laughs> I think we hold off on that. Let's just switch a few of these over. Alright, I switched enough ports such that I need 65 steamers. And let's see if we can't find a good place to build that. Yeah, let's build steamships right here in West Prussia. Oh, clippers are really, really cheap now. Hmm. And we have no active research, of course. Let's do something else. We could get the monitor here. And then we could update our navy to be more powerful. Let's take a look at what England is packing. Their naval bases are using ironclads and they are already using monitors. Gotcha. I think we'll be fine to do something else. Let's do threshing machines to lower our population requirements for farming. We crushed Futa Jalan, so our army should be coming back here in not too long. We completed urbanized Prussia, so what did that do? Silesia has come a long way since our attention was first brought to it, going from small houses and scattered farmlands to being on its way to become a blooming metropolis. So we can get 25% more loyalists from standard living increases in Silesia or more urban center building throughput. Let's just take the, lo the loyalists. I guess that was it. And what is going on here? Chile versus Tijuana. Eh. There's been quite a few plays that I haven't really had any interest in. There's also like an Indonesia versus France fight that keeps going on over and over. So we have grassroots support for law. We could get plus 20% anapic success or more loyalists from lower strata pops in Rhineland. No thanks. Let's take the anapic success chance and more interest group political attraction for intelligentsia. Wow. And we got corporatism that'll help reduce our radicals, hopefully. And steel frame buildings is a spreading to us. All right. We'll probably start doing that in not too, too long. As soon as I can get this debt paid off already. Oh, there's a revolution in Mexico. How big? Oh, very big. Looks like everything except Mexico City, pretty much. And the Mexicans did lose against the USA at some point in time over here. We're going to switch East Prussia over to steamship production. That should help with the price of steamships. And that might be able to allow us to upgrade. Oh, what is this here? Market squares everywhere, please. That might allow us to upgrade our fishing production. Supposedly that would reduce our income by 1.74 thousand for these dudes. They would need 70 more steamers. Let's just push them forward and see what happens. So Friedrich Wilhelm misses cabinet meeting. Ah, oh, so this is the king. Gotcha. So 40% chance of plus 40% enactment success chance or 60% of plus 10%. Uh, let's go with that. Yeah, we could get plus 20% no matter what, but I'll take a potential plus 40% here. Uh, we only got the 10%. Too bad. USA, a lot of people want to do trade agreements with us. We're not going to do that. I just got a notification about a Japanese dude that got exiled. Let's take a look at Japan and see how they're doing. So they are still a shogunate. The landowners are still in power. 
but they have dropped it a lot from what they used to be. And they actually have some colonial affairs, all right? Working on national militia. They have homesteading, very nice indeed, good job. They're doing pretty okay, actually. Although, although the GDP did get quite screwed up after we opened their borders for a little while there, they are finally starting to recover. Our G GDP has still kind of flatlined though. We are going up a little bit. Oh, there's something we actually care about. A Mecklenburg revolt. Proletarian revolt. Oh, never mind. We don't care. We got a mining accident. So we gain some more radical pops in exchange for industrialists gaining power. Or we can do trade unions gaining power for upper strata pops getting more radical. Or royal folk gaining power. Then middle strata get upset. I don't think we want to make the royal folk even more powerful. They're incredibly strong right now. Let's go for the trade unions. We might need to get out of homesteading and into something like collectivized agriculture. Collectivized agriculture does require cooperative ownership or command economy and economic. So we have to first go to cooperative ownership, which is down here. It has a 30% success chance already. Huh. Oh no it doesn't. That's because of additions. See, that's always a bug, man. I don't like that. How it adds the current stuff to what you see here. That doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, nobody actually supports this. We'll leave the proletarian revolt alone in Mecklenburg and see what happens. But us switching is going to take quite a while. The trade unions are going to have to naturally come into power. We have the rushing machines, so now we should be able to reduce our labor, labor costs for our factories, our farms, I mean. It's going to reduce our money income, but that is okay. I want people not working on a farm. Our iron mines are doing a lot better these days. I think we go ahead and do dynamite now. Alright, alright, research. It might be worth doing uh, malaria prevention now. It's five years. Or we can pick up some other things. We could pick up identification documents. Or steel frame buildings. Let's, let's finish steel frame buildings. Oh, we got booming industries done. So we have industrial boom. So with the expansion of both production and consumption of explosives in our country, there's been much debate whether the military or the industrial sector should have priority. We can do plus 33% fertilizer throughput for five years, or a bunch of mines for five years, or munition plants for five years. Let's do the mines. Sounds great to me. And we're already voting on Parliamentary Republic. Let's see how much longer it's going to take. Oh, there's a little revolution with some high radicalism trying to preserve monarchy. That's too bad. The street side standoff. An event for the revolutionary movement. So troops in Schleswig Holstein have reported more and more confrontations with belligerent mobs. Fighting will likely break out soon, even if nothing is ordered. There's only two ways to control a situation. Either pull the troops back or tell them to engage. Well, if we order withdrawal, Schleswig Holstein gets 25% state penalties from tor from turmoil for two years. 50% chance either way it goes up or down for civil war progress. Or we maintain discipline where they're at. They get more mortality per turmoil. I wouldn't want that. Let's have them come back. That's fine. It means that the police don't work quite as well there, but whatever. Oof, we're at minus 106 bureaucracy. Let's go ahead and let's push forward the government administration right here. I might want to do some more government administrations as well. Oh, membership list discovered. A surprise police raid uncovered a list of radicals associated with the Junkers. Several ways we can use this list. Well, we could hunt down every member and reduce progress by 10%. Sounds great to me. Or publicly expose their connections and make them lose even more political strength. Nope, hunt them down. Hey, hey, we have Parliamentary Republic. Wonderful. The time of Friedrich Wilhelm von Hohenzollern has ended. Rupert. Colonius is the new Chancellor of Prussia. Alright, Mr. Rupert, what are you looking like? You're a member of the rural folk. You are a pacifist, really. You oppose professional army, peasant levies, and mass conscription. That's a weird direction for Prussia to take. North German, loved, charismatic. So we have more influence as a result of having this guy around, but I really never find much use for influence. Maybe I should figure out better ways to make use of it. If y'all have any advice for how to use your influence let me know as really he gives us more authority though that's nice although we did lose a bunch just now and even more influence because of diplomat 
All right, let's fix our decrees first. We're gonna have to pull out our decrees in Aurora and Westphalia. That means that we are spending all of our authority on consumption taxes. Let's look at our, oh, we are a righteous government. Wonderful, 100 legitimacy. That is fantastic. Organized crime event in Bohemia. Criminal organizations have begun operating in Bohemia. Uh, we can either put 5,900 government expenses for five years into stamping it out, or the authorities can handle it. We lose 10% authority for five years. Uh, we generate 553, that means 10% would be the amount that we have bonus right now. So I'll take the authorities can handle it. This is probably because of turmoil. They're probably just upset because I conquered them, right? That's the main reason. I'm going to assume that's what it is. That's why the Schleswig Holstein people are upset. We have steel frame buildings. Very good. After that, let's take a look at our weekly innovation. We are at the cap. Next up, we could maybe do some... I don't want to do aniline. That's what's getting spread over here. What about something in the military? Repeaters is being spread. I don't care that much for repeaters. Although we could go down to hand cranked machine gun for plus five army defense and plus five percent kill rate. Eh, not really that impressed. No, I think we want to do something in production. Considering that we're about to have a higher steel use, we might want to go with open hearth process to make that better. So let's let's pursue that path. And then we'll probably do maybe reinforced concrete after that. It's about time for me to get off though. My wife will be home pretty soon and I need to prepare a good meal for her. But I want to try to get this debt paid off before I leave. And we got repeaters. Cool. Not a big deal in my opinion, but whatever. Oh, monitor is spreading so we can upgrade our, dis upgrade our frigates in not too long. Oh, the rural folk petition government to pass protectionism. We'll consider it. We do need to consider what we need to pass next. I just wanted to see this roll over to, there we go, 1.94 thousand gold reserves. We're no longer paying any interest. We've gotten Brandenburg to 61.7% of pops below minimum expected standard of living. It's not great, but it's something. I think we're just needing to employ more people here now. We have 161,000 job seekers, of which 40,000 are peasants. And I'm still building some more barracks here to employ some of those peasants. If I build all those barracks out, then that'll probably take all the peasants and quite a few of the laborers too. So then that means that I do need to maybe emphasize immigration to Brandenburg. We only have medium attraction here so far, it's too bad. We have a lot of turmoil here too, actually. Just because of all the radicals, right? No, because they had such bad standard of living, that's right. That makes sense to me. We're down to number five great power, that is too bad. Our GDP is still kind of stalled out. We might want to pull back on taxes, actually. Our standard of living is finally starting to recover. We're at plus 34,000. We do have access to steel frame buildings. Maybe we want to keep taxes where they're at and just build more stuff. I could pull back on the liquor tax, though. It tends to result in a lot of pain for the lower classes. Eh, I think we're fine. You know, instead of switching to steel frame, let's do reinforced concrete first. And then after that, we'll start switching things over to steel frame. I think that makes more sense. Until then, we can go ahead and reduce at least the liquor tax so people can have a better life and they can contribute to the private economy more. Let's think about doing a law passage here. We could go from appointed bureaucrats to elected bureaucrats, but that would reduce our taxation capacity and reduce the strength of bureaucrats. It does make our institutions cheaper to run though in terms of bureaucracy we might do that one day but i don't think we'll do it right now junkers hate it and intelligentsia don't like it either petit bourgeoisie do prefer it though protectionism might be the way to go it'll make the rural folk happy and they are pissed off of us after all so let's do protectionism we're not going to do free trade free trade it's not my thing i don't think although it might actually be better to trade with everybody in terms of economic stuff like you might be better off truly according to economics supposedly you are often better off usually but it really depends on the context and who is the bigger economy anyway we have a railroad accident in one of our colonies we could lose 
some infrastructure in Prussian Namakro land, or we could uh, either way we lose it. Okay, well let's gain. Let's give the trade union some support for five years. Anyway, it's time for me to take a break after I declare neutrality in this little French conflict in the middle of nowhere. For those of you that have been enjoying the videos, let me know how you feel. Um, I do need to know, I'd like to know, like, I'm having fun playing this, but if only, like, one or two or three people really enjoy it, where I could be entertaining, like, 10, 20, 30 people, I'd rather do that, you know what I mean? But I do enjoy this game, I've gotten a good feel for 1.5. And I do like the up and downs that we've experienced so far in this playthrough. I would like to see Prussia end up coming out on top and fixing our GDP and becoming number one eventually. But if it doesn't make sense, if the videos are, you know, kind of boring, some people will like them, but I think a lot of people don't like them, then we might go ahead and say, all right, we've done it. We've had fun so far, but move on. But I'll play as long as I feel like I'm entertaining a good number of people, so... Thanks so much for watching, and I'll be back in just a moment. I am back after five days. I finally have some time to address this playthrough. So, viewership has been really, really bad. Technically, the, the number of views per video is the same or better than most of my other playthroughs. However, uh, people really don't watch. There's a very, very small number that actually watch the video in comparison to, say, the colonization videos. So, viewership is way, way down. And I've realized now that I've gone over the patch notes that were most recently released that we had a lot of problems with our convoys getting sunk. And there was a big issue with convoys getting sunk way too rapidly. So we suffered from that issue during the war. We also had really, really high losses from attrition with Russia and Austria. Both of those wars, we lost like half a million people, maybe more, to attrition alone. And attrition has been severely, severely reduced. So we suffered from that bug. And then we also had the bug with the armies attacking and then losing, and then losing territory that we had gained. So we suffered from the army bug, so that is the third bug. And of course I didn't know exactly what to do and the game wasn't obvious, so... Anyway, I can see from their consistent patching that they're really committed to making the game much better. But... I think I may have to find a different kind of format for Victoria 3 if I bring it back to the channel because such a very small percentage actually watch the videos all the way through as opposed to clicking and then getting bored and being like eh and then leaving you know because I understand the game is probably difficult to make difficult to make interesting basically but if I played this game in such a way that I talked much less about my individual actions, unless there were more major decisions, I could play for like a long period of time and then compress it into like one, two, maybe three videos, like a trilogy, a trilogy of a whole campaign. Then Victoria 3 might be good for the people that I've been able to reach, which would be fine, you know, it's just a different type of video and I might try that out. But anyway, thank you so, so much for watching so far, but I think it'd be good for me to take a little bit of a break as well and kind of analyze what I want to do in the future. So yeah, thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.